Hey, Travel Biz owner Rita here. Before we get started, I am super excited to let you know that my next audio series is now open for pre-registration. It is the Alternative Careers in Travel audio series, and this was a brainchild since last year when I first started putting audio series, these audio summit type programs together, because I know there's so many of you that one, love what you're doing, but also want to be doing something somewhat-ish on the side or in addition to what you're currently doing within the travel industry. So I just thought this was going to be a really great idea. It's kind of like a pseudo career fair where you can learn about different things that you can do to monetize your business. Or if you're interested in swapping careers, this might be also a really great one for you to figure out what career might be right for you. Now, I don't have all the careers. Like there are so many people more that I wanted to interview, but I am so excited static with the base that I have. So we're going to be learning about travel blogging, travel writing, being a DMC, being a podcaster, being a virtual assistant, being a travel advisor, being a business development manager, and even a travel coach. So go ahead, head over to the link in the show description. Make sure to save your spot because pre-registration is free, but when we go live on August 7th, the registration price does bump up to $9, which is still pretty easy peasy, even if you forget. But don't don't wait because you wanna make sure you secure your spot. So uh, let's get this show started now. Hey, travel biz owner. Welcome to the Summer Selling Series on the Strategic Travel Entrepreneur Podcast. Let's gear up for a summer of sales and learn from top industry experts how to demystify some of your favorite or most intriguing destinations or products. Download the free worksheet in the show description to start taking notes and let's dive in. Alrighty, hello everyone. Welcome back to the Summer Selling Series. I'm your host, Rita M. Perez. And uh, I hope that you have been loving the series so far as we kind of go through all parts of the world. We're going Northern Hemisphere, Southern, East, West, all the in-between. And uh, I love that we're going to the Caribbean today. We're going to Cuba with Danielle with Absolutely Cuba, um, who actually just recently got back from a trip in Cuba. So I can't wait to hear all things. Welcome, Danielle, to the Summer Selling Series. Thank you so much for having me, Rita. I'm really happy to be here. Yes, I know that like we have been talking, like we've been gabbing away at all things not Cuba. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> let's press record. <laughs> so uh, you are day. in for a treat today because we don't know where this conversation is going to go other than to help you sell more Cuba for your clients. So Danielle, just give us a brief background. Um, how did you get into the travel industry and why Cuba? Great question. Everybody always asks me that question because I'm not Cuban, full Mm -hmm. disclosure. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, I do love the country. And I've been selling global travel for 17 years, over 17 years. Mm -hmm. I started planning events in New York, um, where I'm born and raised. And um, I used to host social events all over New York City for women, for singles. Um, I used to host events through a site called meetup.com. Yeah. And at a point, do you remember that site? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it's still a, going. I think it's still going, too. I think it is. Um, at a point, I had the largest dinner in a movie group in the world. I had the largest Black singles group in the world. And I had the largest girlfriend get-togethers group in the world. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I used to host events and those events, um, they always had a wait list. I was always very lucky. Um, And they were everything. They were brunches, museums, scavenger hunts, picnics, you name it. Like we were just doing stuff. And sometimes the same people would come. And over time they would be like, hey, Danielle, we're always together. Why aren't we traveling together? And I was like, light bulb. Right. And um, I planned my first trip. It was to the Montreal Jazz Festival. By the way, we listened to not a stitch of music, not a stitch of music. <laughs> At the time, we a we drank. It was amazing. That's and funny. and I I just started there, and from there we hosted trips all over the world. I was very very fortunate that the group trips always sold out. I always had a wait list, mm-hmm. um, and I just kept going. 
But then around 10 years into selling travel, actually, no, I'm sorry, seven years into selling travel, um, I was kind of at a crossroads. Rita, you can attest to this, that when you sell travel, it can't be about the money. It has to be about a passion. You have right. to love what you're doing. Whatever niche you're in, you have to love it. Because if right. you don't, the money isn't going to drive you. Mm. It's just not enough. Right. So um, I'd gone to Cuba and I went on eight days notice. It was before we could technically go. Okay. Um, there were no apps. There were no sites. There were no anything. I sent a few thousand dollars out into the ether to a man I found on TripAdvisor. People think this is wild and it's, it is because <laughs> it is. Um, and um, I went for eight days and I, I just fell in love from the minute I arrived. And that was the first trip over 10 years ago. Um, and then I went back and then I went back and then because you have to have a little bit of delusion when you think something's going to be successful. So oh I was like, God. you're going to open any minute. Now I had no evidence, no evidence that this was going to happen. Uh -huh. And I got lucky because in 2015, Barack Obama opened up Cuba for right. us to go, um, comfortably. Right. And I had already been, I had already been making acquaintances. I had already been kind of getting the lay of the land and, from 2015, I started hosting clients. In 2016, I started hosting group trips and I never looked back. And it's been like that ever since. That's what's yeah. the what's the appeal? What's the allure of Cuba for you? What was um, the thing that like really got you in on that first trip? I'll tell you, it's a country like no other country I've ever been to. I've traveled all over the world. Okay. Um, one of the things about Cuba that I love, love, love is that I can take 10 people to Cuba and they will have 10 completely different experiences. Really? Even on the same itinerary. They will have 10 completely different takeaways. They will have 10 completely different special moments. They will have 10 completely different things that, that get them, that pull at their heartstrings. You know what I mean? And when you have a country like that, it's a super subjective country. Right. Super subjective. Um, when you have a country like that, it makes it really special because that means that every time you turn around, there's something new. There's something new to discover. There's some new phrase. There's some new food. There's some new, even if it's the same food, it's maybe made differently or by someone or someone's story that goes along with the food. Right. It's just, it's a country that allows if you allow it to be itself, it gives you what you need on that trip mm -hmm. is the best way for me to say it. And mm -hmm. I, I absolutely love that. More than a decade of traveling, I discover something new every single time I'm there. That's every incredible. Yeah. Now, I know I remember back to when you were saying when the president at that time had opened up Cuba travel yeah. And um, especially like a lot of the cruise lines like really jumped at the bit and then that got shut down and closed down. Yeah. So I know a lot of people are still like, but can you travel to Cuba? And I mean, you obviously just came back. So are there any special parameters around Cuba travel kind of like there were a couple of years ago? So I'm going to buy you a cup of coffee because you asked me this wonderful question because I want to tell people a million times every single day. It's legal to travel to Cuba. Okay. It is. <laughs> it's been 2015. I promise you, you will not get arrested. Nothing bad will happen. It is legal to travel to Cuba. And it's okay. been legal since 2015. The The last administration made some changes. And I put that in quotes because there actually weren't very many changes, not okay. substantive changes that would have prevented us from traveling. So okay. the changes that were made were nominal. Only the Havana airport was open to us for a, a significant portion of time. Okay. Um, the embassy got closed. Things like that that don't affect regular travelers. The day after the changes were made, I sent clients without incident. Oh, okay. The thing about travel to Cuba is people think it's super duper complicated. Right. For one, one of the things we do with Absolutely Cuba is we we make it not complicated. We streamline the process. We obviously we do everything for you. But even more than that, we educate the agents, the travel okay. advisors that want to send their clients. And the reason for that is that people still don't think they can go. They right. think it's 
eagle. They think they think a lot of things. So we have to dispel a lot of myths. And that's the number one myth to dispel, that Cuba is absolutely legal to travel to. There are flights that leave from the United States every single day of the week. Okay. that fly into Cuba, American Airlines, Delta, Southwest, and United all fly into Cuba daily. And And I said American Express, American Airlines. Um, <laughs> wish American Express had an airline. Um, <laughs> Bucket list. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, fingers crossed. Um, but imagine the points that we would get. Um, that's the only joke. Okay. Anyway, American Airlines flies out of Miami to Havana, for example, six times a day. six times Oh, yeah. every single day. And that's just one airline. So when people say, but it's not legal, but it's not, well, then do you think that the airplanes are putting masks on to sneak out of Miami across the Cuban border? Obviously not. Right. So I want people to know, first and foremost, Cuba is accessible. Okay, perfect. Because I remember, um, like back when everything had first started opening, there were like, I think six or seven, like it had to be educational or historical or so, like there had to be certain like rules for you Right. that Yeah. you had to There be able are to rules. travel There under. are still rules, Okay. but I don't think the rules are nearly as prohibitive as people Okay. think that they are. So Okay. once upon a time before Barack Obama changed things, you had to either apply for or go with a company that had obtained a special license to Right. travel to. Uh, and that was paperwork and and you couldn't do this and you couldn't do that it just made it it was so cumbersome and so prohibitive nobody wanted to do that so Uh people huh. were going through third countries you don't have to do that anymore it's basically Okay. now a self-reporting system and most people i would say 90 percent of people travel under the support for the cuban people category of travel which means that you have to have a full-time schedule of meaningful engagement with the Cuban people. Now, what does that mean? It means you just can't lay on the beach for seven days. It means that you do things with Cubans, which why wouldn't you want to? Cuba's a cultural destination, right? Right. So you want to experience. So you go to restaurants owned by private citizens. You stay in homes owned by private citizens. Now, I'm going to pause. When I say that, people are like, I don't like Airbnb. I don't like... Well, first of all, Airbnb is a platform. It's not a thing. Right. And in Cuba, because Cubans cannot market their properties the way that other places can, Airbnb is a really comprehensive platform to be able to get people to see what's available in Cuba. But Okay. there are a lot of private properties that are specifically for visitors. So it's not like somebody's grandma is moving the cat off the bed before you get there. Okay. Okay. You know, there are like full luxury properties in Cuba, full. And I mean, luxury properties. Those are the ones we use for our clients, for our custom experiences and for our fam trips. Okay. Um, we use we use boutique hotel properties that Okay. range in size from four rooms to 12 rooms and they're fully staffed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, but all of the things you'd expect from a boutique property, you get that. Okay. Um, and I don't think people know that about Cuba. I don't think they know about the Right. very tiers of, of accommodations, restaurants. So when you're engaging with engaging with Cuban people, salsa class is engaging, live concerts engaging, tours engaging, classic car tours engaging, Mm -hmm. Yeah. um, so many ways to engage. Art is engaging, talking to artists is engaging. all of it and you can make a really beautiful trip um Yeah. to cuba without feeling burdened by all of these rules the rules are go there and be a human with other humans Right. Right. that's the yeah And that's like, if you are going with the intent of having a cultural experience, then that should be there you no go problem going to Cuba there you go then. there you go and i say this to people all the time if cuba has some of the best beaches in the world this is just a fact if you google you will find this Um, I just discovered a new beach that I hadn't been to. It was pristine, pillow sand, clear water, Mm hmm. just incredible, Um, which was great. And we do take people to beaches because it's part of the experience. But we make sure that we're compliant while we do it, right? So you can have a beach day. That's amazing. But Cuba is a cultural destination. It's not a beach destination. If beach is all you want, Mexico's a place. Yeah, St. I was going to say Mexico, Puerto Rico. Louis. Rico. Thailand is a place. There are so many places in the world with beautiful beaches. And beach is all you want. 
Cuba's not it for you, at least not for Americans. And, and in my opinion, it shouldn't be for anybody. Mm -hmm. Cuba is a cultural destination. And the more we engage with the Cuban people, the more that we have a deep and long lasting memory, travel memory that you will, mm -hmm. we'll always look back on because mm -hmm. it's, it's just an, it's an incredible place. Right. For yeah. people who are thinking, because immediately what comes to mind is obviously Havana, the Tropicana, the classic cars like you were mentioning. I obviously will also think about the food because I'm a big foodie and I know Cuba, Puerto Rico, we're kind of like cousins. You're going to come with me one day, Rita. You are. Yes. <laughs> with me to one day. We're going to do it up. We are yes, we are. <laughs> so what, what other, like, what should be people? What should people be thinking about outside of Havana? Like, what are those areas? What are those cultural experiences outside of, like, classic cars and the Tropicana that are not as widely talked about? Because I think people are afraid of even, Absolutely. like, mentioning Cuba. Absolutely. And, you know, here's the thing. Um, I was actually talking to an agent client yesterday because 90% of my clients are travel advisors. Mm -hmm. Um, so our, our business is a B2B business. It used mm -hmm. to be B2C, but it's B2B. That's worth mentioning since for your audience, right. because your audience are my clients too. Exactly. Um, so I was talking to an agent client yesterday and she actually was talking about not spending her entire trip with her group in Havana. And I was so happy because as much as I love Havana, like I said, I'm New York City born and raised in Havana. It, it, it's homey for me. Yeah. But my favorite city in Cuba is not Havana. I've okay. traveled throughout the country multiple times. My personal favorite city is Trinidad. It's one of the colonial cities. It's absolutely beautiful. It's where the sugar mills were before the revolution. It's on the um, slave route of when enslaved people were brought into Cuba. So there's a lot of history there. It's a hub for Santeria and Yoruba and a lot of the spiritual practices that happen in Cuba with a lot of the population. Um, not only that, but low key, it's got a nice little nightlife scene. It's got beautiful restaurants, great views, cobblestone streets. There are parts where cars aren't even allowed to go for fear of breaking up the cobblestone over time. Okay. Um, that's my personal favorite city. Um, and then there's also Viñales, which is the tobacco region in Pina de Rio. That's a province, mm -hmm. also a city. Um, and there, which a lot of people do get to go because it's a little bit closer to Havana than Trinidad, not by much, but people tend to migrate in one direction over the other. Um, and there you can horseback through the Vinales Valley. Um, you have farm to table experiences when it comes to food, because there are a lot of farms out there. Um, you learn about the tobacco processing process. You get to taste cigars, smoke cigars, smell cigars, mm. um, taste rum. You won't be smelling it. Just taste. <laughs> um, so you know, Vinales. And of course there's beaches. Everybody loves the beaches, like I mentioned. Um, but the biggest, most popular beach closest to Havana is Baradero. And Baradero is a pristine beach. I mean, it's pure white. Um, we can't stay on any of the hotels in Baradero because they're on the list of prohibited spaces in Cuba okay. for Afro Americans. But, you know, taking a day trip there, you know, especially if you do it the right way, you can have a really amazing day, relaxing day, beautiful, clear, crystal blue water. Um, just gorgeous. Like there's just so many things. And even within Havana, everybody has to do a classic car tour, right? You just right. must. You right. must. Because when you think of Havana, you think of cocktails, you think of classic cars, you think of cigars, right? Mm -hmm. So we get you all that stuff. But then there are lots of other things. Like we've taken clients in our fams to have dinner in a Cuban home. Um, we've taken people to do cooking classes with, with old Cuban ladies. I love that. Um, we've taken people to do like into art districts where we talk to street artists and the people who aren't really like, they're not in museums and stuff, but they're the voice of youth and they're the voice of, of the country really. Mm -hmm. Um, especially since the pandemic, we want to get people engaged and involved, with Cubans so you can not hear their stories because they're not out there just waiting to tell you stories but when you talk to people you connect with them you right. know before this call like you mentioned we were talking and we were talking about you know a variety of things that you couldn't have known about me from social media or my business but that's how you connect with people you talk to them 
right. you know, that's how energy is exchanged. And um, it, there's no time when that doesn't add depth to um, a trip. And since all of our trips are conducted with people native to Cuba, mm -hmm. living in Cuba, mm -hmm. we don't work with the state, we don't work with the government, we work directly from us to Cuban people. Okay you're adding depth there too, because these are real people um, talking to you about real things and their real perspectives as they're giving you the tours. They're not just saying, look, there's a bird. No, they're really, you know, talking to you. you right. Know? I was just thinking that Cuba is probably one of the places. Cause like when we talk about the d multiple layers of sustainability within travel, Cuba is probably one of those places where there's, as little leaks as possible between like third part traveler and like third party vendors because of how things are set up in there. It's not like you're going to pay X tour operator for anything. Like the money is getting into the hands of the people who need it they the are. most. I can speak for myself. I can't speak for every company. Right. Because a lot of companies coming out of Canada and coming out of Spain that operate differently than companies based in the United States because we have different rules and we have different obligations. Right. But I can speak for us that um, I've always worked with Cuban people when the rules were changed, such as they were again, changed mm -hmm. um, when they were changed, such as they were, I didn't have to change very much because I had already been working with Cuban people every right. day. I had already been building relationships and now more than a decade in those are relationships. My daughter's like, you can legitimately call Cuba and find out the weather. I was like, yes, I <laughs> find out the weather. because you can't get it from an app all the time because Cuba doesn't allow satellites to come over, you know, the country. Mm -hmm. um, but I can legitimately call, you know, Cuba and find out the weather. And I'll just tell you this really quickly. My last group, well, not my last, one of the last groups I had in May, um, they, I was, they wanted to dance. People always want to dance, but it depends on what kind of dancing you want. Do you okay. want the, my daughter called it the music. Um, do you want that? Do you want hip hop? Do you want reggaeton? Do you want salsa? What do you want? Because there's different layers to this. Right. And they were like, they wanted to dance. And I was like, well, a friend of mine is DJing. I said, but it's in the cut. Like, it's not going to, they're not <laughs> going. I was like, put on sneakers. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see any lashes. I don't want to see no nothing. No heels, no. a single pair. Put on sneakers. Uh-huh. When I tell you, Rita, we had to pull them out. The tour leader and I were like, it's time to go time to go I think she might have even had to pull me out um you know <laughs> and I was in town so I was with them but they got to experience that my friend was DJing it was great the beers were 50 cents it was it was wow. fantastic you okay. know those are the kinds of things I'm talking about like and when you work with somebody who's a one destination specialist that's exactly. what you get because this is what we're supposed to know you know this is yeah. these you know, you talking about that, those 50 cent beers kind of makes me think about like possibly another thing that might be enticing to people. The summer selling series is brought to you by the cruise content library. Finding stock vertical videos for your social media marketing is not easy. <laughs> and I mean that good, juicy, quality content that paints a picture of the amazing cruise experiences and not just another drone footage of another ship. <laughs> but I'm changing all that and putting my best content of over 1,000 vertical videos available to you inside the cruise content library that's currently available for pre-sale. Finally sell with video storytelling on your social media channels. Visit the link in the show description to save your spot at the best ever pricing. Is the affordability. Is that a correct word to use when we're thinking about Cuba travel? Not with me. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. It's affordable. Listen, everything There's has layers. to have a, a plan. There are uh -huh. layers to this, right? Uh -huh. there, there, there are levels to this, <laughs> yeah. right? 
Our specialty is custom luxury travel, full okay. stop. That is the specialty of absolutely Cuba, custom luxury travel. And the reason for that is because the first trip I had, as much as I loved it, it wasn't what I asked for. Uh -huh. The person who planned my trip gave me what he thought I wanted as opposed to what I actually said to him I wanted. Um, and ever okay. since then, I've taken what people tell me. I still create all the itineraries myself. I haven't delegated that out. Mm -hmm. Um, So we create custom luxury experiences. And the those custom luxury experiences, as I said, are with the boutique hotels, the full-time driver, the fully staffed properties, the um, pick up from everywhere, drop off from everywhere. My entire okay. team is there. So it's a fully serviced experience. That okay. is our, that's our, that's my specialty. Because up until very recently, I hadn't created the same trip twice. Okay. But as I expanded and as I pivoted from B to C to B to B and working primarily with travel advisors, it became very clear very quickly that a custom luxury experience may not be for everyone because okay. I, your clients may not be my clients. So what we created were um, ready to sell packages that are more moderately priced. Um, they still give you a lot of the bells and whistles of the custom experiences, but at a different price point that allows more accessibility for most people. Because what I was finding mm -hmm. is though people were saying, I want custom, 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 frankly, they were asking for the same things over and over and over again. Okay. So I created 20 packages that are ready to sell, buy off rack, you know, and get to work. And they're fully commissionable, by the way, at 12.5%, because I know travel advisors love to hear that. So okay. they're, they're fully <laughs> commissionable. But affordability, I think, as with anything in travel, we have to know our clients and we have to be realistic and we have to manage expectations. Yes. I've never been a budget travel advisor and I will never be a budget budget travel advisor. Uh -huh. I had someone who came to me recently and wanted me to do an entire trip with hotels and transfers for $800. Mm -hmm. You can't go to New Jersey for $800 for the weekend. Mm -hmm. You can't go to Cuba for $800. And especially since the pandemic where they, and, and before where they're importing more um, similar to places like Aruba, similar to places like Dominica, Similar to a lot of places in the Caribbean, the more you import, the higher the prices are going to go for locals and for people who are visiting. So I don't know if 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 you want to be in Cuba and be comfortable. Mm -hmm. And I don't even mean the luxury part. I mean, be comfortable, be in a clean property, be in a place that's centrally located, mm -hmm. Um get your taxis when you need them, take BC, BC taxis, which are like tuk-tuks, um, when you need them, eat well. That's frankly where a lot of my money goes. Yeah. The eating well part. Yeah. If you want to do all those things and experience the country, it's going to cost you money. Right. It's not going to be prohibitive money. But for example, our five-day package starts at $24.95, commission included. Okay. I don't think that that's a prohibitive rate for a five day trip where 90% of it is done for you. So, right. you know, I think Cuba is an accessible place financially for clients. Mm -hmm. I think that Cuba is a profitable country for travel advisors, for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, Especially the independent advisors, because mm -hmm. they can price the any way the market will sustain their market right but i i definitely think that cuba i think one of the big misconceptions about the caribbean and caribbean travel mm -hmm. is that the caribbean is inexpensive right i have yet to visit a caribbean island and i mean from puerto rico to jamaica to aruba to that is an inexpensive i haven't i haven't been to one Right. I mean, I Puerto Rico alone, the sales tax is like 12% now on anything yeah. that you get over there. So you see what I'm, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think Mexico's not cheap. Once upon mm -hmm. a time, Mexico was a cheap destination. Not anymore. Yeah. So I don't think, and I think because of the, the myth and stigma around travel to Cuba, people feel like traveling to Cuba is something that the Cubans should be grateful for. Mm -hmm. Well, any tourism in any country is something that people are grateful for. Right. I don't think that travel to Cuba should be classified as travel that should be downplayed or down marketed mm -hmm. because it's 
not. It's a unique destination. It's a des destination that's on, I would say for people who want to travel in the United States of America, it's probably on a third of the country's bucket list. Mm -hmm. I, I would, I would, that's a rough guesstimate based on my own brain and talking to people and traveling. But I would, the number of people I hear, Cuba's on my list, Cuba's on my list, Cuba's on my list. The issue is that travel advisors, A, don't know they can sell it. Right. And people don't know they can buy it. I mean, granted, I'm one woman. I'm one woman campaign. Right. But I'm the best. So, uh, like, from your perspective, if somebody is interested in selling more of Cuba, how can they convey the message that Cuba is open? Or what should they be talking about to entice people to go to Cuba, visit Cuba? That's a really good question. Um, nobody's actually ever asked me that question. But um, I'm happy you did because... So I spend half of my day every single day educating people. Mm -hmm. As people tell me you can't travel to Cuba and I then put up a picture taken yesterday, right? <laughs> I'm like, you know, cold 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 cold. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but um, one half of my day, literally every day is educating people about travel to Cuba. Even mm -hmm. the ones who contact me about traveling, I still have to say, they're like, but do I have to fly through Canada? Blah, blah, blah. No. So one of the ways that people can convey the message that they, that travel to Cuba is open mm -hmm. is to just say it. I, I don't know any other way to say it. They For one, they have to educate themselves. That's one yeah. thing. Because if, if a travel advisor doesn't know, and this is due to no fault of their own, we can't expect people to know what they don't know mm -hmm. and didn't know they were supposed to know, you know, maybe I just want to sell all inclusives. Well, then Cuba wouldn't be on your radar. Because mm -hmm. that's not what it, you can do there. Right. But you can sell cult. If you're a culture travel, if you if you sell cultural travel and you know anything about Cuba, what I would do is, well, I have a group dedicated to travel advisors. You can join that group where we talk about travel to Cuba, dispelling myths. I do webinars in that group. Um, every now and again, I'll jump in somebody else's group if they invite me and I'll do a webinar. Sitting in on a webinar, big deal, you know. Mm -hmm. That will help advance the conversation where well, you can actually ask the questions, knock out those myths. Mm -hmm. You know, I would say do a little bit of research on the internet, but the internet when it comes to Cuba is woefully lacking. Mm -hmm. There's so much misinformation and so much wrong information and just, it, it almost create, it's almost more harm than good. Okay. Um, there's another thing, and this is, this is shameless plug barely shameless. <laughs> shameless at all but shameless plug we have um something called a verified agent program okay where when you join not only does it allow you to get an increased commission when you sell those ready to sell packages that i mentioned but okay. we also provide you with the information and emails to let your client base know that you're now selling cuba um Perfect. And we provide you with social media content. We provide you with banners for your website. We provide you with all of this so that you have the resources to start that conversation. Mm -hmm. We also provide you with FAQs and things like that so that you can knowledgeably speak to your clients. Um, and another way, really not shameless, I'm not being shameless at all, is to join one of our fams. Because was... when you join one of the fams, I'm just saying. Listen. I was going to mention, I'm like, you have fams. <laughs> this app, fam. You know, I do. But yeah, come on one of our fams. Fams to Cuba are so few and far between. Like they, mm -hmm. they do not really exist in the travel sphere. But when you come on one of our fams, not only do we give you all of the content that I mentioned, we give you a bunch more. Plus you get a lot of in-destination training where people can see... Rita, you know this like I know this. A traveling agent is an agent that sells travel. Right. It's just a fact. And if people see you in destination and you come back and you're now here, then obviously you can travel. You didn't get a special license. You can break down how you got there, the process, what you did, what you ate, what you saw. So many travel advisors that travel with me and are constantly posting get bookings while they are in destination. I love that. It happens all of the time. Okay. So visiting Cuba, being an ambassador for travel to the country, there's nothing better than that. Whether you travel with me on your own, go mm -hmm. and show people that you can do it. Now, of course, if you go, you know, 
absolutely cuba.com right. but you know <laughs> call a girl but yeah. you know either way it goes go and then show your clients you know how they say i can show you better than i can tell you exactly yeah show yep. them show them and see for yourself and learn for yourself and also learn who cuba is not for because cuba is not for everybody i will right. never in a million years say that cuba is for everybody you know and if you go and there are certain things you encounter or certain things you witness, you can also say to your clients, this country isn't for you if it increases your, your knowledge, it increases the respect that your clients have for you because you went there and you actually saw for yourself and you were willing to say, this may not be for you if. Right. Every client respects that. They don't want to waste their money and time. Exactly. Yeah. And so, that honesty is really what sets you apart from other people absolutely. who will just be like, sure, yeah, absolutely. you should do it. Absolutely. That's why we are called travel advisors, because mm -hmm. we need to be comfortable advising our clients. Yep. We need to be comfortable saying, if you do this, you'll have a trip and that's fine. But I just want to let you know, this may be a better option for you. Or maybe okay. we explore this or how about I give you two proposals and you can see how this flows versus this and then you can have them a visual and make a choice it's the same thing when you travel to Cuba and you say you know the streets aren't really great so if you have a mobility issue you got to let me know so that I can put you in these accommodations over here versus right. these accommodations that might be on a hilly or or sort of messed up street right you know that kind of nuance makes the difference when you're trying to sell travel and be a successful agent. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah, no, I love all that. And I'm like, yes, I cannot wait to visit Cuba with you one day. For those that are interested, uh, what's the Facebook group name and what's the best way to get in touch with you to learn more or start booking Cuba for their own clients? So much stuff, so many things, so many links. <laughs> Um, if anyone's watching this and they've ever seen Danielle Fabulosity, that is not my birth name. Um, <laughs> at all. um, but you can find me on Facebook. Um, don't friend me at Danielle Fabulosity because that's where I post things about my kids, but you can, you know, Facebook me at my, my professional name, which is Danielle Linares, L-I-N-A-R-E-S. And I'm on Facebook and I have a bunch of travel friends and we talk about Cuba. Um, my Cuba fam group for um, fam travel and travel agents. You can also find me there. Um, my group, my general group is absolutely Cuba. Um, the ultimate, ultimate Cuba travel community. That's also on Facebook and I'm on TikTok and I make lovely little TikToks yeah. about Cuba. Um, and I, I do love it over there. I haven't had time to make a TikTok in a couple of weeks, but I will be soon because I have tons of footage. But um, everybody can find me there. My website is absolutelycuba.com. Um, and there is a travel advisors tab on my website where people can go see how, well, travel advisors can go to see how you can work with us and the mm -hmm. options that we give you and the ways that um, we can add Cuba to your to your portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just the resources that we have. And that's how you get in touch with me. You can also email us at ola at absolutelycuba.com. Perfect. Yeah. Thank you, Danielle, for being here and sharing about Cuba. Um, I am certainly intrigued, and I can guarantee that there's going to be at least a couple of travel advisors who are in the same boat with me today. So make sure that you reach out to Danielle. Um, this has been another amazing episode in the Summer Selling Series. So thanks for being here, travel advisors, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you, Rita. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on the Summer Selling Series. If you haven't already, make sure to download that free worksheet for today's episode in the show description. And if you've got a travel biz friend that you think would benefit from this series, would you mind sharing this episode with them? All right. Thank you again. I'll see you here next week.